I'm going to talk about easing China. Authorities there investigating possible stock crimes. Some say it's a blame shift for the recent collapse in the Shanghai market. Senior fellow at the Cato Institute, Dan Mitchell, with me now. So, Dan, is this China not wanting to accept responsibility for having this uncomfortable relationship between free markets and still having a communist system? First, I have no idea whether there are some traders and financial market people in China that did some bad things. Let's set that aside as a possibility. It doesn't change the fact, though, that China's government has had too much cronyism, a complete lack of transparency, uh, lots of fake stimulus uh, that made what Obama did look trivial by comparison. They, they haven't been willing to liberalize their economy and allow true free markets. So they've been living off a little bit of liberalization from 15 years ago. They haven't done anything since then. They're trying the old printing and stimulus approach. And I think it's created a lot of instability and volatility over there. And the chickens are coming home to roost and they want to blame somebody else. They want to blame somebody else, but should China's government itself be looked at or, or just reflect, reflect in some way about creating some of the bubble? They should. It's the fault of China's politicians in the same way that when we have bad policy here, it's the fault of our politicians. But what do you do about that? As far as I know, the only country that has ever put its politicians on trial for economic mismanagement is Iceland a few years ago. Uh, nor, and, of course, in a dictatorship like China, how are you going to put those leaders on trial? You can't do it. So you just have to hope uh, that the central party over there wises up and realizes that if they want to have true long-run prosperity, they need to learn from Hong Kong, which, coincidentally, is a special administrative region of China. All right. And, Dan, we know as this presidential race heats up, there are numerous candidates weighing in on our business relationship with China. Here's Donald Trump. We're tying ourselves so closely to Asia, and in particular to China, that this is going to be trouble for our country. I'm a free trader. I, I, I disagree with protectionism. I think that, yeah, we are interlocked with China. And we're interlocked because we've made a choice that we want to buy goods and services cheaper. You can't put your head in the sand and say you can't work with China. It's like, it's like saying, look, we're not going to work with this big customer because we don't like them. All right. So that was Donald Trump and then Mark Cuban, billionaire investor's reaction to him. But to Mark Cuban's point, we are all interconnected. There are two economies in this world with $17 trillion footprints. One is the U.S. and one is China. What's the best way forward, Dan, economically speaking, for these two countries to work together? I think the recipe is the same for both of them. Both countries need to move in the direction of more long-run stability and growth with good policy. Now, we have an advantage. We're much we're much farther ahead of them in the Economic Freedom of the World Index. We're number 12. And they're like, I think it's 115 out of 152. So we start from a much stronger position. Of course, we could improve our policy. China desperately needs a new round of economic reform and liberalization to sort of free the economy, uh, get the boot of government off the neck of the economy there. Let genuine markets allocate capital, not giving special loans and access to the princelings and a lot of cronyism uh, with the bigwigs at the Central Party Committee. Uh, China... It really is a tragic story because they made such progress for a few years in the 80s and 90s, but now they're just living off that. And I'm afraid it's, 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 it could create geopolitical instability because China is such a big, important country in the world. I hear what you're saying, Dan. Reform is needed. Hopefully there are some people in government there who are thinking the same thing. Dan Mitchell joining us there. He is a senior fellow at the Cato Institute.